Hey guys, it's Chia here again, and I just wanted to make a video to kind of explain my hair journey um, and kind of explain why I decided to start a YouTube channel um, and definitely to give you guys those tips you've been requesting so much on what I did to grow my hair so long and healthy. Now the key word here, you guys, is healthy because we will be focusing on the health of our hair. Now before you stop the video um, and think I try to mislead you with the picture I put on the cover, um, I know you're probably sitting there thinking like, Psh. Your hair is not that long, boo-boo. Um, if you follow me on Instagram at Naturally Chia, just like my YouTube channel, you know that I just recently cut my hair, um, like last week. I went in to get layers, but let's just say that the stylist got a little scissor happy when she saw my hair. Um, and ended up cutting around six inches. Um, so definitely in the process of growing my hair back. Um, because I'm not really feeling this haircut. Don't think she properly blended the layers in. Um, but it's okay. I'll call it Big Chop number three. Um, and definitely we'll be using the tips that I give you guys in this video to grow my hair back to the length I had it before, um, which was around hip length. Right now, um, my longest layer, let's say, is around bra strap length. Um, but we can just grow our hair together, you guys. Um, now I did start filming this video, um, before I cut my hair. So later on in the video, you'll see my hair is straight. And you will see me putting it up in a ponytail just to kind of show you guys that I did not have any extensions in before. Now I've had relatively long hair the majority of my life, but it was definitely never as long as it was before. Um, I am biracial, my father is Liberian, and my mother is half Mexican and half Chinese, but I just want to touch base a little bit, you guys, on the common misconception that mixed people have good hair, and that the only reason a black girl's hair is long is because she has to be mixed with something. You guys, this is completely false, okay? Just because you're mixed with something does not mean you're going to have long hair, and just because you're full African American does not mean you cannot grow your hair long. I have friends that are full black that have long, healthy hair, and I have friends that are biracial that are lighter than me that have short kinky hair that just will not grow at all now of course just like with any other aspect of your life whether it be weight loss your medical history um acne um hair loss things of that nature genetics do play a role but that doesn't mean we cannot do things to promote hair growth or we can't do things to reduce your chances of getting a disease etc um, I just think that with proper hair care and hair maintenance, we can help our hair grow if it's reached a plateau. So I never really fully embraced my natural hair texture until I got to college. It wasn't that I hated my curls, it was more of I didn't really know how to properly care for them, definitely did not know how to style them, and I just didn't know proper hair maintenance. Never in my wildest dreams that I think I'd be able to do a wash and go because I thought my hair was just unruly and unconventional. But look at me now, you guys, definitely rocking the wash and goes, and I love every single thing about it. Honestly, you guys, I just learned so much through watching a bunch of YouTube videos um, and doing my own research that I just decided to start my own channel and kind of pay it back um, to share any knowledge that I may have gained. Um, I think it's important for us to share any knowledge that we may have. I mean, our ancestors did it, and that's how we were, we were able to evolve and grow as a society. Um, and basically what I'm trying to do through this channel is if I'm able to reach at least one person and help you fall in love with your natural hair, help you embrace your natural hair texture, help you learn how to care for it, just learning proper natural hair care, then I will have accomplished my mission. I uh, definitely think there's too much negativity in the world, not enough positive people trying to uplift one another. And I just want to help you fall in love with you. I think we're all beautiful in our own individual ways. Um, so definitely that's what the reason why I decided to start the channel. Um, now what I'm hoping to gain through this channel is I want to improve the manner in which I articulate myself. Um, just trying to be a little bit more clear and concise um, because I do need that for my profession. I find that I'm very good at learning things. I'm a fast learner, learn it quick. Um, but when it comes to verbally explaining or teaching something, definitely not good at that. I could 
do it written but orally yeah not really my thing so um please you guys i'm open to any feedback you guys may have about my videos whether um i'm i'm just dragging on or they're too long um just please leave me a comment down below um and let me know or if i skip a step be like hey you totally skipped that step um open to any feedback so definitely hoping that um, I would be able to help you guys and in return you guys can help me as well that way we all can just grow as people along with our hair I know you guys I'm corny but in reality like it's the truth we all can just help each other grow as people like I mentioned earlier my mother is not black so she didn't really know how to properly care for my hair texture um, because she does have a different texture than mine so she kind of just let my sister and I just kind of deal with it on our own so all I really knew growing up was water in a hair tie so my hair was just extremely dry and it was always tangled now I didn't start flat ironing my hair until I got to eighth grade now the first time I, I flat ironed it it was um, around mid back length and the ends were just super dry but I got tons of compliments um, because it's sad to say that that is what is acceptable in our society, straight hair. Um, my own teacher actually didn't even recognize me. She thought I was a new student. But I continued to flat iron my hair because that's all I knew what to do. It's what people liked. Um, it's the only way I knew how to style my hair, I guess. But I remember asking my mom to cut off all my split ends um, towards the middle of my eighth grade year. Um, and I kid you guys, like, I, I, I kid you not, okay? She cut my hair. She did the first cut, and it went to shoulder length in, like, 0.2 seconds. And I'm sitting there crying, like, what did you do? And she's like, ay, pues tú me dijiste que te cortaba you know speaking in Spanish like you told me to cut you know the split ends and I'm like oh my god so I'm crying my eyes out with my brother and my sister over there laughing it up but there was nothing I could do I just had to let her finish cutting it um, unless I wanted to walk around with um, a crazy haircut um, so that was I guess my first big chop um, I, I went to shoulder length um, in eighth grade and then I continue to straighten it on a daily basis. Um, I did play sports, um, so my hair tends, well, my head tends to sweat a lot. So I would come home after practice, wash it every single day, wait one or two hours for it to dry, and then re-straighten my hair that same night, sometimes even um, using the straightener when my hair was still a little damp. And then using it again in the morning because it was a little puffy because I used it on damp hair. So I did that for a good three years. I would get regular trims, um, I'd say probably once a year, but it would always be even cuts. And I noticed my hair wasn't really growing at all. Um, it was kind of just stuck in one same length, um, which I, I guess the longest it got then was like armpit length. But I just remember going to get a, a, a trim towards the end of my junior year and the stylist asked me if I wanted to keep my layers. And I'm sitting here thinking, layers? Hold up. Like, you know, like I've never had layers. What are you talking about? And sure enough, you guys, she picked up the back of my hair just to show me that that section of my hair was shorter than the rest of my hair because that is how bad my hair was just thinning that it was breaking off and just kind of creating its own layers so I asked her to give me an even cut um, so I was back at around shoulder length again so that was my second big chop and then I took my merry little butt to Sally's and bought me a little ponytail piece so I basically rocked a fake ponytail piece for the remainder of high school and going a little bit into the freshman year of college um, so I'd say it was about a year and a half to two years um, and I like to call that my transition period. Um, I know there are some naturals out there that really don't consider you a true natural if you've never permed your hair. But it's my hair journey. If I want to call it my transition period, then it's going to be my transition period. It was after my big chop. But I would religiously um, grease my scalp every single day with products such as um, the Dew Grow Mega Thick Hair Vitalizer. I would use the Blue Magic Coconut Oil, which I still use to this day. And I would use um, the Africa's Best, I believe it was the Maximum Strength um, Hair Grease 
don't really remember the name of it but if you guys want to know just leave me a comment and i'll be sure to look that up for you guys but um again i would do that every single day and then put my hair um in a bun and just attach the ponytail piece um to the bun so my hair was always in a some sort of protective style um at times i would um twist the front of my hair just to kind of prevent me from adding any gel or you know hairspray to smooth that back um, but of course the twists weren't um, tight that it's pulling they weren't tight enough to pull my edges out um, so that I think that helped also um, but I, I really wasn't straightening my hair anymore I'd probably straighten it every three to four months only to get a trim um, or you know for like a special occasion for like homecoming or something like that but once I got to Houston, Texas, um, it was pretty much impossible for me to straighten my hair because it's crazy humid out here. So I guess I did help um, prevent me from going back to, um, you know, straightening my hair, using a lot of heat on a daily basis. But <clears throat> I would say um, that once I did got uh, once I did get rid of the ponytail piece, I didn't. I still didn't really know how to style my hair. I didn't really know um, how to properly, um, you know, care for it. Still, um, besides all I knew was how to grease it. Um, and basically, I was still washing my hair on a daily basis because I was still working out. Um, but I would say that it wasn't until. Um, the end of 2012 that um, I really noticed a change in my hair um, and it was because um, I had switched to natural hair products. Um, my father had passed away from cancer um, in 2012 and it just really made me reevaluate you know my life, uh, my health. Um, really made me focus on what I was putting in and on my body um, and that included the stuff I put on my hair as well. So um, I, I noticed that my hair um, instantly got fluffy and it got uh, a lot more softer, um, definitely a lot more manageable. Um, so uh, I think that really did help a lot um, uh, as far as where I'm at today with the health of my hair. Um, but also um, definitely always keeping it in some sort of protective style or um, low manipulation style um, that also helped as well. But um, definitely, um, that's pretty much my hair journey, you guys. I'll give you guys all the tips um, that I, I, I used and all the tips that I still use to this day and the tips that I will be using to grow my hair back to the length I had it before. That way we can um, just grow our hair together. Okay, so let me just start off by saying that I am not a licensed beautician. So any tips or suggestions that I give you guys um, in this video or through my channel, it's just stuff that I learned from personal experience or stuff that I researched for you guys um, to give you guys some good information. Um, I'm just a natural hair fanatic. Um, I love all things hair and I just kind of want to help you guys through your journey. And I know you guys have been asking me a lot um, what I did to grow my hair so long and how it, it it, I was able to keep it so healthy. Um, so the first thing on my list is going to be protective styles and low manipulation styles. Now, if you don't know what a protective style is, a protective style was going to be any kind of style in which your ends are tucked away, protecting them from overexposure to the elements as well as friction. A bun is a great example of a protective style. Now, a low manipulation style such as braids or two strand twists is going to be any kind of style that requires minimal upkeep. Um, both protective styles and low manipulation styles will help you retain your length by reducing your um, split ends as well as uh, tangling and they will also lead to less breakage that is caused by constant combing and over styling as well. 
Okay, so the next tip that I'm going to give you guys is going to regard detangling. I know if you have curly or kinky hair, our hair tends to get tangled real easily. So we really have to watch the method in which we detangle our hair so that we don't cause a lot of breakage. Um, now, I would suggest um, just using your fingers to finger detangle or you could use a white tooth comb such as this one um, just to gently pull the strands apart. But no matter what method you're using, whether it's the white tooth comb or your fingers or the Demon brush to detangle, um, just make sure that you always start from your ends and just kind of work your way up your hair, up to the roots. Um, this will ensure that, you know, you don't um, snap and break your hair up higher up the hair shaft um, by all the tugging and pulling that you're doing on your hair to just uh, get the knots that are higher up. So uh, gently starting from the bottom and just kind of pulling the strands apart will make it easier for the the knots that are up uh, that are higher up on your hair to just kind of um, pull apart easily. Now I do like um, using the finger detangling method because um, you can kind of gauge uh, the amount of pressure and force that you're putting on your hair um, with your fingers, and you can just gently pull the knotted up strands um, apart and make it easier to detangle. Um, that way but no matter what method you guys are using just please make sure that when you do detangle that you are starting from your ends and working your way up to your roots to cause less breakage okay so another tip that I have for you guys is going to be sleeping with some sort of scarf or bonnet on your head that is made of either um, satin or silk or even investing um, in a satin pillowcase that you can sleep on now what this is going to do is going to it's going to cause a lot less breakage um, that's caused from all the constant tossing and turning that we do when we sleep um, because our head is going to be able to um, move around a lot more easily because it is a smoother material so this is going to lead to less breakage caused from all the friction of the tossing and turning that we do compared to a cotton pillowcase Okay, so the next tip that I have for you guys is a really important one because it involves our nutrition as well as our overall health. Um, of course, having a nutritious diet will increase the health of our hair as well as promote hair growth. Um, eating the right types of nutrients can fortify our hair follicle, which is extremely important because that's where our hair will be growing from. So you want to make sure that you have a diet that's rich in um, nutrients such as um, zinc, iron, uh, vitamin D, protein of course, omega-3 fatty acids, and biotin, just so that you can increase the health of your hair and promote hair growth. Um, water, of course, is also an essential nutrient that we do need um, because it will ensure that our body stays hydrated and it will hydrate our hair from the inside out. Um, now, if you find that you can um, eat foods that are rich in all of these nutrients, then just go to the vitamin store and I'm sure you could find some supplements that do include some of the nutrients that I did describe. Um, but just keep in mind, you guys, that our insides do reflect on our outsides, not only in our hair, but in our skin, um, our nails, our eyes, and even our breath as well. Um, so you just kind of want to live a healthier lifestyle, not only for um, your hair um, and your appearance, but also for your overall health and longevity as well. Okay, so the next tip that I have for you guys is regarding moisture. It is extremely important that we keep our hair moisturized. No, it will not promote hair growth, but what this does is it will help you retain your length and any new growth that you do acquire because dry hair is more prone to breakage. So having moisturized hair and long hair kind of go hand in hand. Now the key to um, well, a well hydrated hair um, is that you want to moisturize with a water-based product or even water itself and then you want to seal that with some sort of oil. Um, you can use jojoba oil, coconut oil, um, olive oil, or even castor oil or any kind of oil that you guys want to use. Then you can even take that a step further and just um, seal both of those in with some sort of cream. Now what you just did right there is you completed the lock method. Um, if you don't know what the lock method is, that's L-O-C and it stands for, the L is for a leave-in or a liquid, a leave-in conditioner or a liquid. The O is for oil and the C is for some sort of cream. Um, but I could do a separate video explaining that method in full detail if you guys want me to. So just let me know down below if you would like me to do that. Now another way to reduce dryness and ensure that your hair does stay moisturized is by switching to all natural hair products. So these are going to be your products that are sulfate free, paraben free, and free of any harsh chemicals. Now sulfates are found in most shampoos and it is a harsh ingredient that contains chemicals and salt. 
So sulfates can dry out your hair cuticles and follicles by stripping your hair of its natural oils and even causing scalp irritation. Sulfates are used to strip the grease off a car engine, so just imagine what it's doing to your hair, you guys. Now, a paraben is a chemical substance that inhibits the bacterial growth in products in order to prolong its shelf life. Parabens can also cause scalp irritation, but the main thing for me in finding um, paraben-free products is that studies have shown that um, traces of paraben have been found in samples of breast tumors. And I know I mentioned that my father did pass away from cancer, so I really like to watch what I put on and in my body, and that includes my hair as well. Now, another tip that I have for you guys is regarding protein treatments, deep conditioning, as well as how often you should be shampooing your hair. Now, using protein treatments will really help your hair by attaching to the hair follicle and really fortifying your cuticle layer. This will protect your hair from further damage and really prevent your hair from breaking off. Now, conditioning, uh, deep conditioning on a regular basis will really soften and hydrate your hair and lead to less breakage. Now, as far as how often you should be shampooing your hair, you really want to limit the amount of times you shampoo um, only because you don't want to strip your hair of its natural oils. Now, um, I like to shampoo maybe once a week, but uh, again, like I said, only because um, I am active, I tend to sweat a lot, um, and I tend to get a lot of scalp buildup because of that. So if you're not an active person, um, you could probably get away with shampooing once every two weeks. I know there are some people who shampoo like once a month and some people who just don't shampoo at all. Now, if you um, tend to get a lot of product buildup, another alternative that you can do um, so you don't shampoo is you can co-wash. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically um, conditioner washing. So you're basically just going to use a conditioner to just kind of gently cleanse your hair from any product buildup um, or scalp buildup that you may have. Have. Now the next thing I will be talking about is heat. You really want to limit your usage of heat just so you can prevent heat damage. Clarifying before using any heat is very important just so that you don't fry any product buildup, oil, or dirt that you may have on your hair from previous styles. You can also try doing a protein treatment before and after applying heat. Um, of course lowering the temperature um, would help tremendously. You can try stretching your hair before flat ironing it. I know there's several ways um, in which you can stretch your hair um, and this will allow you to lower the temperature on the flat iron um, and still be able to achieve that straight look you're going for. Now, of course, the number one rule when using any kind of heat is to always use a heat protectant. Unfortunately, I did not know this when I was growing up, um, but I was flat ironing my hair every single day with no heat protectant and it really damaged my hair. But basically what the heat protectant is going to do, it is going to create a barrier between your hair and the heat styling tool and shield it from any damage caused by heat styling. So a very important tip that I do have for you guys is trims. It's very important that you go and get regular trims just so that you can get rid of any split ends that you may have. Now, I know there are some products out there that do claim to repair split ends, but don't believe these products, you guys. A split end cannot be repaired. What these products are basically doing is they're basically mending your hair back together, kind of just gluing the split end back um, until your next wash day. But the split end is still there. It can still travel up your hair shaft. So the only way to get rid of a split end is by cutting it off. Now, the average hair grows around half an inch a month, so you can probably get your hair cut, um, I'd say maybe at least once a year, if not twice a year, um, and just go and ask for, um, I'd say half an inch or to an inch off um, if, you're, if you're growing it. Um, but I know, um, as far as I am concerned, um, throughout my transition period, um, when I would go get a trim, I would go and ask um, for like a centimeter or um, in half an inch, uh, the most an inch off. Um, but the past um, two years, I've gone and asked for like two inches um, to four inches. Um, and of course, this last time she ended up cutting six. Um, but it all depends on how your hair grows. Um, but definitely trims, you guys, will help your hair um, uh, continue to stay healthy because the split ends will not be traveling up your hair shaft um, and this will help you retain your length um, if you reduce the amount of split ends that you do have. 
Okay, so that's all the tips I have for you guys on how to achieve long, healthy hair. I know I did focus a lot on the overall health of your hair, but that's because if your hair is healthy, it will be able to retain its length and it will continue to grow. And eventually, your hair will reach whatever hair goal or length you have set for yourself. So I hope you were able to take something from this video. If your hair has reached a plateau, I hope I gave you some useful tips on how to retain length or how to kickstart some hair growth. Um, so please feel free to give me some feedback on the video make sure you like comment and subscribe if you don't already follow me on instagram make sure you follow me at naturally chia um, just like my youtube channel and again thanks for watching you guys and have a happy hair journey bye